DJ Miz. Do you have any songs about your dog Ava? I do actually. Oh, you got to talk about the Yeah, on my EP, um, I don't think anybody ever actually like noticed it, which kind of made me sad. But on my e like university EP, there's a song called Coming Home, and right at the end of it, there's like a dog bark, and like I wrote the whole song about her. <laughs> so. But now you know. So now you can go I have listen. To, now I have to go listen yeah, to it. Yeah, but I'll probably write another song oh, about that's her. Oh, so cute. What about Ziggy? Ziggy, yeah. Well, Ziggy's my roommate's dog, so he's got to he's got to earn his place. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll write a song about Ziggy. So where are you from? Hello. Hello. Oh. I'm serious. I've never heard him get that excited to be with him. I'm not excited. I'm the dog whisperer. What can I say? Music is. All my neighbors are gonna be like, who is this guy? Can you walk on this side because the microphones? Oh. <laughs> Back to you. Guys, it's Gina with Sidewalk Talk. I am here with William Black. Hello. What's up, guys? You said you were born in Long Beach. I was born in Long Beach. I lived there until I was about five. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Irvine when I was in like kindergarten. How so. come you moved from Long Beach to Irvine? I don't know. I think my. And then you moved to Orange County, right? Eventually. Well, Irvine's in Orange County. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's okay. You don't know. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think my parents just wanted to move there. The schools are really good and it's like really safe. So it's definitely like I have an older sister and it's a great place to like raise a family. Mm, in school, what did you, did you play any sports? Um, like growing up, yeah, I played like baseball. Um, Were you good? I was okay. I don't think I was ever like amazing at any sports, but I like enjoyed them. I was really into skateboarding. So I skated oh. from like fourth grade up until... Like I still skate sometimes, but not. I was oh, like, really? I tried to. It's hard. I broke enough bones to where my parents were like, "You should not <laughs> just keep skating." Or my dad would like want me to wear like full pads when I leave the house. I'm like, I'm not gonna look cool. If I, <laughs> all the kids are gonna I'm bully me gonna if I'm wearing cool. pads. Well, so what did you break? Uh, I mean, I broke my leg once, but actually, that was playing soccer, and I broke like my arm and like some fingers and stuff. There's my, my, my roommate just left. Oh. <laughs> with the I dogs. was gonna say he kept <laughs> looking yeah. at you. At what point were you kept look? He keeps looking. Yeah. <laughs> so at what point did you start getting into electronic music? Um. Well, like my sister put a bunch of songs on my iPod, like mm. probably in like 2008. Like the white one. Yeah. Or yeah, it was like the one. I actually had a, I had a red one, but it was like an iPod mini. Oh. And uh, she she's like seven years older than me and she was in college and I went mm. and she put like a bunch of like electronic music on it. But then I started like... What was your first, this first song where you're kind of like, ooh, I love, I want to do this? Um, that is a uh, move for me by Cascade and Dead Mouse. Mm. So that... That was like the first song where I was like, whoa, like, what is this? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can go this way or we can go that way. It doesn't matter. Let's go this yeah, way. Let's go this way. Um, yeah, and I was like, wow, like, what? Well, first I was like, I saw it and I was like, oh, Cascade and Deadmau5. Like, what song is this? I know. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, ooh. Deadmau5. Deadmau5. And then, too. yeah, I don't know. I was just like, that is awesome. And like, I have to find more of this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then when did, at what point did you start pursuing like, producing music? Um, I mean, I tried, like, so I started, like, going to raves in, like, 10th grade of high school. So I was, like, probably, like, 16. And that's when what? I... What? Yeah. Well, like, you know, in Southern California... Is there Cal going to ra raves that early? In Southern California, they used to be all ages before, like, What was weren't. your first one? Uh, it was called Winterfresh. Winterfresh. And it was... Fresh. They don't do it anymore. But it oh, was, like... Okay. 
Dash Berlin and Zedstead mm. and like Mount Eden. Mm. And um, and I was really I was really big into like trance. And I still am, I still love mm. trance. Um, so yeah, and after that I was like, this is like exactly what I want to do. Like I wanna make music. And so I tried and I tried to like learn how to DJ, but I was like really bad and I had my first show. Uh, well, I played at this like local club and so, and so Wait, why am I, I don't why know. am I ducky? Like, I'm just getting attacked by the tree. Um, I had this like at this local club in Orange County and I was so bad that they kicked me off. And it was like it was like real deal. Like I was, what? I was terrible. I had no idea what I was doing. I was in over my head. And um, how did you get that gig in the first place? I was just I would go to this thing and I just was like met one of the promoters for it and I was like yeah like I showed him some like mix I'd made he's like yeah you can like open like in a few weeks and I, and then I, after about 10 minutes I'm like alright you're done oh, no. <laughs> and at that mo moment I was like maybe I should quit <laughs> this and I feel like I didn't like it wasn't until I was a little bit older that I actually like, started taking it more seriously because mm. throughout um, high school and stuff I kind of just wasn't like I wasn't super mo like motivated with for it, with anything except music, so like I didn't really do well in school. Like I didn't, I wasn't like a, an amazing student or anything. Mm. I was getting in trouble and stuff, so I kind of had to. Well, I, like I went after high school, I graduated, went to like half a semester of community college, mm. and just like stopped going. And was like, this isn't what I want to do. This mm. is a waste of my time. And what did your parents say when you? Want, when you were starting to produce music or wanting to be a DJ, like you knew you wanted to do this, eventually you had to tell your parents, right? Or that what that I dropped out, or oh, that no, I no, wanted that, to do. Oh, that. they knew that. Yeah, honestly, when you um, told them you loved doing you'd like, like DJ, they knew for like, for, like I always talked. I was pretty, like they knew what I was passionate about. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's so like. I've, I've talked about it a, a bit like online and stuff and like I used to have kind of a issue with like drinking and doing drugs mm. so they were much more concerned with that the, the than scene? like well not even no not even oh. that it's like they were much more concerned with like my well-being oh. that like once I finally like got my life together and like cleaned my act up they were just like completely supportive with whatever I want to do as oh. long as I didn't go back to that so they were like I love that. They're the best. They're like super supportive. They never told me to get like a real job. Oh. They always come to my shows if they can. Like they, they came to like the last LA show I played and they drove up to San Francisco to go to those too. So. Oh. They're great. That's yeah. amazing. I yeah. love hearing parents supporting, you know. Yeah, it's hard because I, I mean, I've heard from people that like, it's like a whole nother battle I, ha I mm. never had to deal with, which is like having my parents. Yeah, seriously. You know. People are like, if you are looking at us, <laughs> it's great, it's so funny. I always get these stares, yeah, but like really guy? long stares. You got kicked out from doing your <laughs> first DJ yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. At one point, did you, you said you got into it when you were older? Yeah, so okay, so that, let's like try to build the timeline here. That was <laughs> yeah. probably like 17, mm -hmm. okay? I moved out to LA when I like, a month before I turned 19. Okay. And then... What would you do to support yourself at that time? So... Um, when I moved out here, I actually moved and I went to like a rehab. So I was like in rehab for like a year. And while I was in rehab, I started going to Icon Collective, mm. the music school. Okay. And then after that, I just had like, I mean, even till like a year ago, I was like doing music and then working like uh, in, like retail. Um, I, I like a couple jobs I had where I managed like a vape shop mm. for a couple years and then I also like worked at um, like a rehab and like a, that kind of sort of thing. So like in like drug recovery. Mm, I see. And so how did yeah. you like Icon by the way? I loved it. I mean I went, when I went I think it was 2013. Uh, to 14 and it was great like I honestly had no idea how to like pr produce music before mm -hmm. I went there and it gave me like a crash course and like more than anything like I met a bunch of really cool people like my roommate um, John I met him there 
and um, some other people. So it was definitely like great, like especially being surrounded by a bunch of people who are just as like motivated mm. as you. It really pushes you to just like be the best you can be right. and keep trying to learn. Right. So. And then so that kind of set your the path that you're kind of in now. Yeah, I think so. I think it definitely like helped jumpstart my career because. I really had no, I just knew I was like passionate about music, but I didn't know like how to put the ideas I had in my head like into a program or anything. So, um, tell me about you being introduced to, because this is everyone's question, like how did you get introduced to Elenia? It's actually really funny, it's like super like unmusic related. Um, One of my friends from LA that I met grew up with him. And they're like really good friends. And so like four or five years ago, like he just put us in touch. So before like Elenium was ever like, before he was like Elenium, you know Mm. what I mean? Like now he's so big. I I picked him up for, from the airport for his first show in LA. And it was like at some club here. And I think he was opening. There was like a couple hundred people there. So to go from that to like <laughs> Staples yeah, Center is like, and only right? like a, only like three three years maybe. That's probably it's like mind blowing. It's pretty crazy. And what what's great about him is like, he's like very much about like helping out all of his friends and just like. The, I the, love the, that. The thing that's cool about like I see like all the people I tour with like, Dabin and Trevor, mm. um, said the sky and Nick Elenium. Mm. But like we're all like actually friends, so it's never like a weird kind of situation. We all just like go on tour together and we hang out and it all works out. And there's no like drama or beef on tour or anything. I don't know. It just kind of works. I kind of got that vibe. I don't know how, but I kind of got that vibe that you guys are just like genuine, like a tight knit yeah. group of friends. Yeah, it goes like much more than like music. Like if I'm. Like, I'll call them if I'm just ever going through anything, and I know I could talk to them about anything, so. It's good to have that, especially in the music industry, because I feel like, I don't know, like, a lot of people are fake or whatever, so it's good to know that, like, the people that you surround yourself with actually, like, care about your well-being, like, that's really important What What are some big challenges that you face within, like, either personally or, um, musically? Um... Like within the music industry, I feel like a, a biggest, the, one of the biggest parts is for me is just like self doubt in general. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, it's funny because when I was like first like starting to do the music thing, there was never any doubt in my mind. I was like, and it didn't come from like an ego point like perspective. It was more just like, like this is what I want to do, and like I'm gonna be successful at it because like this is my passion. Yeah. And then once I started to actually like achieve some of that and like be more successful, is like when I started doubting myself, oh, which is really? weird. So it's like. I started playing shows and my people started like, I started getting more recognition. I'm like, what if this like doesn't pan out to anything? And what if I'm 40 and I'm still, you know, trying to do it and it never amounted to anything. But I think that's pretty much just normal with anybody, you know, Mm -hmm. like whatever you're you're doing in life, you're always going to doubt yourself, but you just have to like push through it and know that it's not an actuality. It's just the way it is. Like you're never going to be happy all the time. Like you wouldn't know what happiness was if if you never experienced sadness. What was the happiest moment you've ever experienced? Oh man, that's a... Um, I guess you could do top three. Top three, okay. Well, I feel like a lot of them have like, definitely like when I played Red Rocks and I was just like... <gasps> yeah, I was. was uh, that? that was insane. That was easily like one of my favorite shows ever. Just the fact, like, like Red Rock, that's crazy. Right, I don't know. Just the energy and like to see people like, reacting to my music I think at that time was the most people I'd ever played for and I was just like whoa like I walked out there and I was like Jesus do you get nervous yeah sometimes not less less than I used to like that show I definitely was nervous but that I feel like that was probably probably top top three I can't Red Rocks Red Rocks is probably number one Mm. I think so far that would probably be mine too. Yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Face any other challenges besides self-doubt? Um, like, how do you handle? Uh, I guess this is a, another big question. How do you handle um, writer's block? 
that's what literally what I was gonna say. Honestly, I feel like <laughs> I used to struggle a lot, and I, I mean, when I got back from tour, I think I was like, dang, like I've been gone for three months, and even though I have been working on music, I haven't like finished anything. Mm. And I kind of started like getting down on myself, but I realized that like I only really work on music when I feel like working on music or if I'm inspired. And like if I'm beating myself up about not being able to come up with anything, like sitting down and working on music isn't gonna help. You know what right. I mean? Like I just have to accept that like right now I'm not gonna work on music and I'm gonna go take my dogs on a walk or go play video games or Well video games. Uh, I don't honestly play that many video games, but like Mario Kart and that's about it. Oh. All my other friends are like way into video games. <laughs> I feel like if I started playing video games like that, I wouldn't do anything else. Yeah, that's true. Just How like, often do you work on music, by the way? Um, I mean, almost every day. It just depends. Like, I haven't worked on anything today. Like, is it like a full time? You, you ca do you set a certain time, or it's no. like literally when? Whenever. Like, because some nothing. people are yeah. like, you need to treat it like a full time job. You wake up at nine. Uh, well, here's the thing. Five. <laughs> I one of the reasons that music was attractive to me was so I didn't have to have a schedule for myself. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I never wanted to work at a desk and have a nine to five job. True. So if I like do nothing all day and then all of a sudden at like 11 p.m. I get an idea, then I'll work on it till like 8 ah. a.m. or whatever. Whoever. I just I feel like putting a time table on like something artistic makes absolutely no sense to me. That's true. That's I true. don't know. Okay, so That's we're, my two cents. we're gonna jump into fan questions. Okay. There's so many. <laughs> oh, I've never I've never seen so many fan questions before in my life. Yeah, is it comfortable? Yeah. Do you need a face? And then it just block? Yep. Wait, is it recording? It's very know. important if it's Am I? <laughs> yeah. Alright, okay, here we go. Okay, let me just scroll back. Little brownie cakes. Oh, sh <laughs> okay. What? I don't know. Do you know them? No, I don't know. It's oh. just a funny name. <laughs> Little brownie cakes. Little brownie cakes. What's your favorite color? Mm, probably like baby blue. Baby blue? Yeah. So specific. Or like, like, okay, you know, like cotton candy, like sky, like baby pink or baby blue, like that. <laughs> That's my get down right there. Uh. Oh wow, that Lupe chick, Lupe chick. What's the most memorable thing that happened or slash you experienced on your recent tour? Um, I mean there's lots of like really like cool things that happened just like on music related. Like we went, one of the venues we played was at the Detroit Masonic Temple and it's like a kind of abandoned like Freemason temple that has like over a thousand different rooms in it and me our tour manager um trevor and day like explored it for like two and a half hours and it was like the creepiest <laughs> slash coolest thing i've ever done and i was like this is top like anything i do in life what's a, a, like your favorite place you've traveled traveled hmm. to in america i mean i really love denver and i really ooh. Like Hawaii, I mean, I can't. It's just so beautiful. I, I've gone to like Europe, and I really liked Amsterdam. Um, mm. Those are. I like, love Amsterdam. It's great, right? I it's so small, though. You I know you pretty can pretty much just be there for two days and just discover everything. I was there for like yeah, I was there for like three days, and I was like, all right, I feel like I've done everything. Yeah, I know. You know? Seriously, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. Um. Oh, U A J C Pool. Top three things: how to learn production like William Black question hmm. mark. Um, oh, you're filming me now? Um, I think probably like YouTube. Is, I feel like you can learn anything you need to learn about music production on YouTube. Like even after I left music school, like that's pretty much how I learned everything else. And then also just like sending my music to people to have them like actually like Honestly, critique that's it. also a big question too. Yeah. Because like small, because a lot of up and coming producers, they like hustle and they like send everything that yeah. they have. And what is the best way of approaching a bigger artist? Because Honestly, you're like probably overwhelmed with so much music. 
Well, like, just, should you even do it in the first place? The I feel like the messages I'm more inclined to answer are the ones that are just like, hey man, like, uh, here's a song I've been working on and would appreciate if you could give me some feedback. Like, that's it. You don't have to be like, I've got, you know, this and this and this is how many followers. Like, nobody really cares. Like, you just have to, like, if you want, like, right. honest feedback, just ask for it. And email an artist. I'm sure you can find their email on their right. social media and stuff. Uh, DJ Miz. Do you have any songs about your dog, Ava? I do, actually. Oh, you got to talk about fly. <laughs> yeah, on my EP, um, I don't think anybody ever actually, like, noticed it, which kind of made me sad, but on my e like university p there's a song called coming home and right at the end of it there's like a dog bark and like i wrote the whole song about her <laughs> so but now you know so now you can go I listen to, now i have to go listen yeah, to it yeah but i'll probably write another song oh, about that's her so cute what about ziggy ziggy yeah well ziggy's my roommate's dog so he's I'm... gotta he's gotta earn his place you know <laughs> i'm just kidding i'll write a song about ziggy um how do you oh co girl 86 how do you start a song melody how do you yeah how do you start a song melody or lyrics which do you prefer i guess she's saying like what do you oh, start like, yeah, with yeah yeah uh it depends i mean honestly i don't have like a set method no like sometimes i'll start with like you know the chords or a melody and kind of just build off of that and sometimes like a, a singer or like a writer will just send me a vocal that like I can already relate to and love and I'll just build off of that. Mm. It depends. There's no ever, there's no way like I really like prefer. Uh, how long, oh, A. Ricklu. How long have you been producing and at what point did you know it could be your job? I guess I can, is that? Yeah, I mean, I guess I've been producing for like what year is this? 2020? Okay, we're five or six years, like actually, like, yeah, I'd say like, no, probably like six years. And I feel like I didn't really know it could be my job until about a year ago when I actually like quit my other job. Because I was always like, oh, yeah. Oh, like, at the vape store? Yeah, so I, I quit the beginning of last year. So I've been really only self-sufficient off of just music for a little over a year. Oh, wow. Do you have a mentor? Kind of. I feel like I have a few. Um, Could you say? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I said it's really just who, like my roommate John is like super talented. And so like anytime I ever had any questions, I could ask him. I can send my music to Millennium and he'll give me feedback or said the sky has helped me out a ton on my stuff because they're super. What I like about them is they're super like honest and kind of blunt so if something like doesn't sound good they'll just be like this doesn't sound good oh really? you know what i mean or like oh, change this good. or try this i think that's really important is to just have people who are honest i'd rather somebody be like i don't like this than just be like yeah it's cool you know like that's you're like never gonna grow fact. yeah for fact. sure you can't grow as like a person or as an artist if um you know somebody's not being real with you I think this like for the last like 20 minutes I've been holding it sideways, so I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, DO5H1, who is your dream collab artist? We keep walking down the same. Oh, we're going in circles. Yeah. We've been going in circles. This is, what, this is my block. we got to keep it down right here. Um, dream collab. Oh. Oh, that's hard. I feel like probably like Above and Beyond, Porter Robinson. Or, um, that would be really cool. Yeah, that would be super cool. Probably those are like the biggest two. Mm -hmm. their, their music has like impacted me so much that. Oh, Cameron underscore Grams. How do how do you feel about fans recognizing you and approaching you for pics? Oh, I love it. It's so oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know, some people, some artists are like, kind of like, oh my gosh, it's like my me time. Honestly, if you don't love your fans, then like, what are you doing? I In know. my opinion, like, they're the ones that give you a music career, and like, if you're not gonna like at least be respectful to them, then I don't know if you deserve to like have what you have. You know what I mean? I, I, that's my opinion. Like, definitely, there's times where I'm like, all right, like you know, I. I'm like busy or something, but I feel like for the most part people are pretty respectful. Mm. The last time people, they always like think I'm somebody else. So a lot of time people <laughs> think I'm, you. I've gotten uh, Zomboy. <laughs> and then the other day, 
well, not the other day, but a few weeks ago, somebody kept yelling at Kali at me to take a picture. And I'm like, <laughs> eventually I just went and took a picture with them. I was like, all right. What if they tagged him? I hope so. I hope oh, they got him. so funny. You didn't want to even correct him? Nah, I didn't care. It was Aww. more funny. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, how Trill trip music. How do you make or process your mid bass layer? Question mark. Question. There you point. go. Uh, it's mostly just like multi band compression. So like there's a way where you can just EQ out like the mid range of like a bass or something and then I just apply compression to that. And that, I know this probably makes absolutely no sense no, to you. No, it makes a little sense. Oh, cool. Yeah, totally. So yeah, I use like Fab Filter, and. Um, What's your favorite plugin? Um, oh, that's a hard one. It just depends, cause like I, I, I can't like I like Serum for like a synth, um, and yeah, I don't really know. It just depends like what I'm trying to do. Some of these things are in like different languages. I don't know. Like, I, don't I only know speak one. Says. That's Russian. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that says. Um, ooh, Bill, what is it? Billium wax. That, there you go. That's what some people call me. Really? Well, some of my friends call me Bill Wack. I don't know why. <laughs> I have like a hundred nicknames. It's really ridiculous. Wait, what nicknames do you have? Oh, is your be... actual full name William Black? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why did you just stick with William Black? I don't know. Because I just like, thought I thought that you sounded. You didn't want to go with like palm tree or anything. No. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I feel like I came from like liking like trance music so much that like mm. all those DJs just did their names and I was like, I feel like my name's like cool enough to yeah, work. It, it could is. just be my name. You know what I mean? Or like. I was like, is your last name actually Black? That's really cool. It worked out. Yeah, it really did. Um. Oh yeah, Billion Wax. Ow, ow. <laughs> she got attacked. Uh, Billion Wax favorite childhood. Oh, favorite song from his childhood. Oh, childhood. Mm, I mean, I listen to like a lot of like Blink 182 and stuff. So probably anything by them. Ooh. A lot of like pop punk kind of stuff. What struggles we talked about that? When are you going to Atlanta again? I have no idea. Oh. Yeah, but why did soon. he change his logo? Did you change your logo? Right I now? did. Um, honestly, because like I, I wanted to change my logo like last year. Do we attempt to walk up that? I'm not walking up there. <laughs> <laughs> no way. We'll go a different way, but I don't want to do any physical exercise right now. <laughs> That's a big hill. I've been looking at it. I've always wanted it. It's not that big. It's big. <laughs> no way. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to do something that felt like it was more genuine to to like what I was and the new logo I had made. It just kind of felt <clears throat> like messy to me. Um, and it looked like three different logos like turned into one and I just mm. didn't really feel like it felt linear. I really felt like me. Mm. So changed it sorry do you use for your creative stuff do you use like one is one person your go-to guy um or do you for, kind no, of it just use a whole bunch of different i feel people. like i use a few different people mm -hmm. depends on like what it's for if it's oh, for like video or like but i think i really just try to find somebody who's like in line with like what who do you where do you find them like art station usually art station yeah it's like a website the, it's oh. just like people who like upload different kind of art and like I'll find an artist I really oh, like. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought like usually people's go-to is Fiverr. Do you know about Fiverr? Yeah. Actually, I think the first art I ever had made was on Fiverr. Mm. But, um, no. What's the worst thing about being an EDM artist? Mm. I don't know, I feel like I, I can complain about everything, but lack of sleep. <laughs> I just like touring can like it seems like it'd be really fun, but it's definitely like very tiring. Mm -hmm. um, and like one thing I've seen with uh, you know other artists, not necessarily with me because I'm not huge yet. It's just like people saying like terrible things about them, and like it just kind of it comes with any with any artist. No, it doesn't matter what kind of music, but 
the bigger you get, like, the more people are gonna just, like, say mean things just to say them, so, I think it's just seeing that, like, hate is, like, hard, especially when it's, like, hey, I'm, like, a human being, you know what I mean, like, don't, don't be so mean. Do <laughs> no, feel? not really. Oh. I mean, I feel like... I feel like it's... Like, it depends. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've definitely seen it before. People say mean things all the time, and I'm just, I just try to brush it off, but... Yeah, that's... You know, I can so see... Nice. It could get... Uh, advice for up and upcoming producers. What advice do you have? Um, just focus on making music, and don't worry too much about releasing it or like getting assigned to record labels because I feel like I feel like it took me like three or four years to get my music to where I actually was happy with it and you're always going to get better so you don't want to just release the first thing you make because in two years you're going to be like why the heck did I release that it sounds terrible like you want to like focus and just make sure that you're know, like make a song be like cool alright start another one and just keep trying to learn more and not worry too much about the artist side of it like the branding or the playing shows or the just like focus on getting your music sounding as good as possible what is your favorite childhood memory um i feel like just like skating around with all my friends and like not having like a worry in the world just like looking back on that i'm like dang i miss that and so much and breaking your leg and your finger yeah well, that. <laughs> well no just like as simple as like going and meeting up with mm people and like skating around my neighborhood like I do you still keep in touch with those friends Your yeah some of them I, yeah it's fun. hard I mean like after high school you kind of everybody like does their own thing mm -hmm. you know true and so it's hard to keep in touch with everybody yeah last question very important okay what do you want to be remembered for um like as an artist or just in general I, I guess, the artist, I guess like you guess. could do both I don't know if I just want my music to like be able to help people so if I can like be if my music can be used as like a way to help somebody's day then like I'll be happy like I want to write songs you know like not something that's like forgettable I want people to listen to my music forever you know I don't know I try not to think about it too much. I try to just have fun because I feel like the more pressure I put on myself as an artist, no like the pressure. Less, the People less fun. People love what I have. you put out. Like yeah, no, I I think it's great. I'm just like, I think this year I realized that like I just want to write music that makes me happy and like hopefully people like it. And if they don't, that's okay. But you know, if uh, the reason like I got into music was to have fun, and if I'm not having fun, then like, you know, what's the point? Yeah, I love that. Guys, this is William Black. If you like this video, subscribe, like, comment. Over here or somewhere. So, It'll somewhere. somewhere. It'll be somewhere. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.